Hey everybody, before we get into this week's episode, we just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's listened to or watched our episode so far. If we can ask a big favour of you. If you are watching us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. If you are listening to us on any podcast platform, please hit that follow and give us a rating. It'll help us a huge amount and reach more and more people. Thanks again, everyone. Welcome to Over the Falls podcast, episode number 31. This week, we sat down with professional artist Seren Morgan-Jones. Seren's work reimagines historical Welsh figures with a feminist and contemporary twist. In the episode, we discuss the early years, the art world, her time at St. Martin's College of Art, her processes, and the daily juggling act of having a young family. We hope you enjoy. Seren, welcome to the show. Ah, thank you very much. Well, Thanks, for so, so. Thanks for coming. Oh, Jochen Vaar. Okay, so just want to start with, has art stroke painting always come quite naturally to you? Oh. Or is it something you've had to work on? No, no, it's it's the only thing I've ever been good at. I've always done it, um, always been encouraged, but it's it was kind of like a no-brainer. I think, I think there was a moment through terrible teaching in Penweddig. Um, oh, God, what was he called? Glyn Art. I'm going to name him because he deserves to be shamed. But yeah, it was around, it was with, it was with him that things I was just like, it's just a bit. And so I got, I thought I'd maybe do more graphic design. So that was the only time in my life where, and it was only luckily then later moving school and getting a different art teacher. I was like, oh no, this is, this is it. This is the one I haven't really got much choice. So yeah, it's, yeah, always. So you clicked, clicked with it oh, from, yeah. from that move. Yeah, from the, so we mo- we moved. So when I, when I sort of realised I don't want to be messing around with this graphic design lark, um, this is not. I don't think it's for me. Um, was when we'd gone to live in Vienna, and I was going to wow. do. Sorry, we were going to do the last two years of my secondary school uh, to do. So the equivalent of uh, sixth form type of thing. Sure, sure. Yeah, went out there, and so yeah, that was. That was that was where I was like, oh no, this is it. I really do want to do art because because I was doing out there, I was doing IB, so you have to unlike A level where you get to really focus down if you want to. Um, there, you it's more like a GCSE in that you have to do a lot more subjects. I think you've got to do six and then a seventh little bonus one. Right. Um, so yeah, I had to do art. By which point, I was really like. Oh, art I do I do think as well as you know I found it very difficult with the GCSE and the A level systems very prescriptive it's a very tight way of doing it mm. where they're like I mean it could be different now I don't know but it was very you know choose a subject and then like study it to death type of thing and I'm just like mm. and I found that very dull whereas the IB they're like yeah you just got to make an exhibition here's a canvas here's a paintbrush like you know Go. and whereas and I was just like I don't, I don't do this like <laughs> I was really bit. quite daunted by it um but it was the, uh, <laughs> and I was like, I was failing miserably in the first year. He would give me like zeros, do you know what I mean? Um, and, uh, but it was, so we, you know, being in Vienna, massive, amazing cultural city. Mm. And like, um, you know, in this country, all those cultural places, it's free. So I was going in and seeing, and this was, you know, they had, Klimt is a very famous artist and all of his work now has been sold off and it's been separated. I don't know if that was to do with like Nazi looting. Anyway, but this was before mm-hmm. that was all. So you could go to these, you know, the museum and I could see all of this work together for free. I'd go out on the weekends and I could just, you know, so it was amazing. Whereas compared to Aberystwyth, which is wonderful, but it's not a cultural metropolis like Vienna, Vienna is. No. You know, it's not. Not quite, right? no. Like the, <laughs> no. the art centre is really doing its best, but it's not, hmm, what, what, what like, you know, you know, massive Western, you know, um, a sort of cultural, uh, you know. Yeah. Ma- you know what I mean? Like, so th- that was where I really like, oh, no, this is it. This is, you know. So. Um, How old were you w- when you were in Vienna? Sort of so I, I'd started my um, A-levels in Penwethig. Yeah. So I did the first year. So I, bas- um, so I was 18. I turned 19. So I finished school a year later than anybody else because I repeated a year. Okay. Mm-hmm. To, so yeah, so that's that's yeah how old I was out there, um, and I had a great time. Really loved it, um, and I think it, it saved my bacon in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. just for the slightly the, sort of the different sort of structure of the course and how it was focused. Um, having a really good teacher, Dr. Derek Pygram. Shout out to Dr. Derek Pygram. We, st- we yeah we still we still email <laughs> each other on occasion. Do you really? Yeah, that's we know nice. I do. That's brilliant. Yeah, I bet, he was, I bet he's very proud. Yeah, he do. He's a lovely bloke. Mm. He did say to me when I was leaving, he was like. Um, 
because my dad was a teacher in the same school as well. Oh. So that's why we were, we were out there because my dad was, was teaching there. Um, but uh, uh, he did say to me, and he was like, if you ever do want to become a teacher, I will give you my job when I retire. So I was like, okay, I don't wow. want to be teaching. But he obviously, you know, we, we we spoke to each other like peers and stuff, which was which was lovely. Um, and uh, yeah, so I found him. That was it was immense encouragement. So, yeah. um, and it caught me just before I'd have tried to go off and do graphic design. And I think I'd have really not liked it. It wouldn't have been for me. Is, um, that, is that more computer based thing? I think it like, probably would have been by then. Yeah, because graphic design is like things like that. And, yeah, yeah, and you've got it. It's it's a totally like I I ended up living with a graphic designer for a little bit when I was in London for college. And, you know, sort of seeing the way he'd have to work. And I'm like, I haven't got the brain for this. I'd have never been able to do it. Like, mm. it's a totally different, as far as I can tell, uh, or feel, a very different creative way of thinking. Yeah. Um, and you also, you've got to do things on behalf of other people. You've got to translate what they want. And I'm like, you know, even, you know, illustration is maybe potentially closer to what I do. And yet I find that as an art form <clears throat> really baffling as well. Like, um, it's it's I find it amazing how people can be like, that's your story. Here's a picture to help, you know, that yeah. I think will, you know, yeah. illuminate it. Whereas I'm just like, no, no, I only want to do my thing. I don't, I just, I have, yeah, it's just about completing what I want to do. How long did it take you to get, like, your style then? Did that come quite early on? Uh, I've been doing the same thing since I was a child really yeah in no, in the, it's, it's the study of like <clears throat> sort of single or not very many figures often like female or fem- like when I was a kid you know it'd be animal people right um and uh or it could be and then you know depending what I, t- what I was watching or into as a kid maybe they're riding a dinosaur or maybe you know, it'd be things like that you know it'd be so I'd be doing that kind of thing and making you know the dress and design and all of that so and and now if you look at it, you're like it's pretty much the same, you know. <laughs> still really interested in color and pattern in the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, were, so were your family like sort of? Did they encourage you to do that oh, to take that path as well? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. I was I was very lucky that I think maybe sort of secretly they were a bit like, oh my god, she wants to do art. <laughs> but at the same time, they were like, don't do because t- mom was a teacher, dad was a teacher. And they were both like, don't just don't don't ever teach. We'd rather see you stacking shelves in Tesco than teaching. Really? Wh- why do you think they had that view? It, I think it's just because of how bureaucratic it's become as a system, mm. how much is expected of teacher now. They've got to fill a gap in for like social services a lot of time because right. it's been gutted, you know. Mm-hmm. So what's expected of it, you know, the art of teaching is one thing, but that is a small fraction of what is expected of a teacher mm. now. Yeah. So I just think, you know, yeah, it, you know, oh, they got loads of holidays. They, you know, their working day finishes at three thirty. Like, heck, does it? No. You know, um, mm. so it's it's a really hard. And I think you know, compared to when my mum and dad were last teaching in schools, um, it's changed. It's got even worse that way. You know, Oof. all about reaching level, like teaching kids like number or treating kids a lot like numbers. And mm. oh, you know, we're gonna if you can't get all the kids to this grade, not everybody's meant to be an A student. Target. And, <laughs> Targets, targets man yeah. like it's Tick it's in the box yeah so that is, that is a thing with school because yeah. you've either got you're either academic or you're not in my opinion yeah and i certainly wasn't growing up and i, I felt like they, they, we should have had more opportunities for people who weren't oh, academic 100 percent, isn't it yeah absolutely different it skills for different people well, exactly. but i don't We're think i'm different. academic but <clears throat> that's not to say everyone has their own set of skills isn't it oh, and everybody it's has where something it fits of, in. yeah of value to absolutely yeah no i totally agree mm-hmm. um and uh, you know if i the, you know the way that uh, creative things, you know, uh, uh, their importance is diminished more and more and more. Um, is 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 such a, like you know I don't I'm not somebody that thinks like art is going to save the world or anything. I don't think that writing a protest song is going to change anything. But mm-hmm. um, it's not to say that it's not important though. And I think you know the way that you get arts and music funding is being cut everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's it's an innate part of being a human. Like and and to to you know for pe- those people who it really is important and we've all got these different things that we can do that doesn't involve a consumption or you know uh, that that we can do for ourselves that benefits us greatly on a profound yeah. level um and art offers that in for so many people you know from those who like to do it as a hobby which i think is as valuable um as those who do it say you know and work ends up in museums you know so yeah all these creative ways it this is that's what I think when people say everybody's good at something. What we what I feel it is is that is everybody's got something that can make them feel good. You know, yeah, you got to do it to recharge your soul. Um, everybody on this planet loves a 
certain type of art form, I think. Yeah. Um, be it music, be yeah. it... Sport a, a or... Folk, yeah, anything. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many different levels of it. It's yeah. escapism as well, though, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's, it's a, you know, if, when you get into a groove with something, and you probably find it like, you guys like surfing, for example. Mm. Mm. Um, but, you know, and if you hit a, your, your stride or something, it gets almost like into a meditative state. Like, you can't work at that constantly. But if you can you hit those moments for like five, ten minutes, that, you know, and then you've got to sort of step back. Like, it feels but it's, so it's, nice. It does something, you know. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's flow state, isn't it? Yes. That's the term. I was going to ask you about that later on in the conversation, but yeah. have you, you've obviously experienced that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. you know, when you're sort of like, you know, th- you know your tongue sticking out. <laughs> in the mix. Or yeah. catching yeah. flies exactly. or whatever it is, you're really in the zone. <laughs> and then you sort of like step back, you're like, oh, yeah, no, we got it. it we did it, you know. Um, and uh, it's, um, I do feel a lot of the time with with being creative in that way. of like this beast you've got to feed in the, you know, if you look after it and you can maintain it, you know, in a certain way, c- with a level of consistency, hmm. it's going to, re- you know, feed your, you know, re- recharge your battery. Um, but if you neglect it and you can't sort of, if you c- are unable to get the chance to, you know, do it, it's going to, it kind of, it can sort of uh, chafe away. Yeah. Mm. And I think if somebody was to say, you can't do that anymore, or I don't know, then oh I, you know, I'd be like, ah, uh, we're, we're in trouble, boys. Like it'd be, yeah. it'd be really, really hard. So I think, you know, it's, 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 for me, luckily, that I think is a big part of maintaining my mental health. Mm, nice. Is that having access to that thing? Like, obviously, you know, people have different levels of problems and stuff. So, but mm. um, how, how, how have you found it um, having kids? Then, as in the time the, yeah. limitations. No, that's that's very difficult. Um, I think you've got a. There's an element, especially when they're very young in the in the early years. Like it's, it has changed hugely. Like before, my I'm I'm terrible time management, you know. And I I I've been fortunate enough that I've had had the opportunity to do solo exhibitions uh, for m- most years since coming out of college, you know, on and off. Um, but you know, before having kids. I sort of like dither and dither, sort of thinking about it, dither and dither, and then you get the anxiety, like, oh god, about starting a little bit, and am I going to mess this up or whatever? And um, oh, I'll just I'll do some more research on, oh, I'll come up with ideas or you know whatever, um, and then I'd end up being like, oh shit, I've got three months and I've got to do how many pieces? <laughs> oh shit, you know, like god. twelve hour days, like just do it, do it, do mm-hmm. it, you know. Um, and just sort of being like, John, we're not really going to speak to each other now for a long time. I'm sorry, mate. You're going to have to... I'm in this room. Yeah, that's it. yeah. You know, I'll see you later. Um, uh, and, you know, and could sort of, you know, and do it. Um, whereas, yeah, since having kids, it has forced me to sort of manage my time a little bit better. But the other thing that I'd struggled with a lot, luckily that's been less of a problem now, but with the broken sleep... And what it does to your problem solving brain, which you need constantly Mm -hmm. when you're doing anything creative like that, because you're sort of, I mean, in my case, at least, and I think most people do, you know, art or whatever, you're, you're not just doing a, you're not just sort of completing a system that's already been put in place. You've set your task of doing something potentially uniquely yours and you're creating something new. So you're going to come up with new problems all the time (laughs) so you're like so i'm going to do this picture i've not done one like this before i don't you know what i can imagine can only take me so far because i might be like right it's going to roughly be these colors it'll be fine you get going you're like it's not going to be those colors (laughs) what colors is it going to be (laughs) oh i don't know oh it turns out that face isn't really working oh christ i don't know how to fix it um you know and so you or i thought i was going to do this technique i was going to wing it see if i could you know try this new way of doing it Oh, and it's not worked. But I've also got to try and get this done. Uh, you know, but sounds, without sounds very stressful. It is, it is <laughs> really it stressful. Be, yeah. And and especially when you've like you've got you know the external commitments where you're like you've got to get this thing to the gallery because, you know, the the you know the way way it works with the, with with galleries the, the you know the wall price they yeah. get fifty percent you get fifty percent so okay. you've got somebody else is highly invested in what you're doing. Um, they've got to run their business for that month or whatever yeah. off. You know. And so you're just like, oh, sh-, you know, it's it's it, so it's um, it's a blessing and a curse that it's my job. Um, and you actually enjoy that? 
Uh, well, <laughs> oh, it, the is, art stress. Stress. <laughs> it is. It is stressful. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's not like I'm saving lives or anything, but no. I've got to pay bills. Yeah. Um, mm. But uh, but then again, I'm like, it's better than having a boss, I guess. And yeah. when the, when they have had the existential crises before, like. I was really like, oh, yeah, no, this is fine. I'm going to be able to earn money doing this. I mean, not massive amounts of money, but, like, I don't think I'll get, get anything. Get sort of yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm going to get more anywhere else. Um, but I was just like, what am I going to do? I don't... Uh, sh- I don't know. I remember at one point, like, should I do be a makeup artist? I've never, never been adept at, you know, I could maybe put a bit of slap on for myself, but I'm just like... And I spoke to somebody who was working at Vogue at the time. They're like... Do you really know what's involved in that? I'm like, I've got no clue, but I don't know what to do. <laughs> I've watched and she's up, just yeah. like, yeah, the hustle is so intense, and you've got to like, if you ever get good enough, you're going. And I'm like, yeah, that's not for me. Like, I, <laughs> that sounds, yeah, I don't know. You know, should I do teaching? And uh, you know, so and it was just like, I don't know what you know. So I am lucky that I've not had to face that mm. problem. So you touched, you touched um, briefly then on like your your sort of method or a technique. So take us through if you can. Mm. You got a blank canvas in front of you yeah. how how do you start how, what on earth do you well how do you do it well firstly you've got to get the blank canvas because <laughs> canvas yeah. stretching is I, the, if you talk to a lot of painters and they're stretching their canvas canvas stretching is a pain in the tits <laughs> I, I never <laughs> even thought about canvas oh, is no. that when you put it around the wood stretch yeah. it around the wood so I mean I get um, tight yeah hmm. you got it oh, yeah, so you got you get these like um, canvas pliers and the way I like my canvas is to have it bone china smooth so in order to, like, like different artists will have you know painters different requirements of the surface but to get the canvases that I want so you buy you can buy the what they call the stretcher that's the wooden bit at the back nice. and I, I buy those ready cut and they're not too expensive that's fine so you've got to get those together make sure they're square and then um, you're going to get your canvas and you're gonna you've got a staple gun and then yeah. you're um, stretching it on and you want to get it as tight as a drum so you do the first stretch and then and you've left your corners because you're gonna you're gonna do hospital corner on those at the end yeah <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna do and yes yeah, so you, you've got to do that then you put hot water on it and it takes out all the creases it makes it really tight and it takes out all the slack excess and then it goes as it dries it gets a lot looser yeah so you've got to re-stretch it again and it's really hard work like i remember when i had to do lots because like oh i've really badly managed my time again (laughs) and you like you you know it's the blisters on your finger you've got to like tape up because it's like really repetitive really straight so um and so you've got to do that maybe two or three times just for one canvas (sighs) that's kind of cheating it you could probably do it a fourth and then i'm going to do You've got to put um, the the gesso is the white. I I use white, but gesso is the surface that's the sort of the base of the painting. Um, and uh, so I'll probably do minimum seven layers of that, and then I get wet and dry, really fine sandpaper to get that. Oh my goodness! All me. entirely smooth. Right? So that's that's the, and the, I did not know any of that. No, I, I I just thought you just went in on the color. <laughs> yeah, and you're you straight it. on it. <laughs> by, yeah. by the canvas from and that's why I'm not a painter. I mean, I do, <laughs> dream, yes, I do me. dream of the day where I can go to like Hello Russell and Chapel Swaggy Art Shop in London. Oh, ah, <laughs> yes. Um, I'd like to order my ready-made canvases by your amazing team. And yes, I'll I'll absolutely spunk that cash. That's marvelous. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. That, wow. Yeah, yeah. So that's um that's where we'd like to be. So it's a it's a lot more cost effective to you to have to I think I mean that. <laughs> I think at this stage yeah yeah right. um wow. and and because I think I'm quite particular about what you know the surface so that's the first bit and then you've done all of that you're like god don't don't look at this up because you know you've made a lot of effort with that um and and then so what I will do I have to kind of at the moment I've settled into two sort of ways of working mm-hmm. so I have my sort of more like traditional work which I might be looking at sort of historical things. Um, like I'll do, I'll sort of try and depict my versions of um, more traditional Welsh identities. Yeah. And by now I'm sort of, with kids, I focused in on traditional Welsh dress. Hmm. And I like sort of playing around with that, whilst also um, I like to highlight the sort of historical um, textile industry that we've got in this country. So... I like to try where I can be sort of faithful in aspects to history. Mm-hmm. And that's a little bit more um, rigid in certain ways. 
I don't tend to be as experimental with the paint, um, but it might be a bit more lighthearted or whatever. Right. Um, you know, there's it. Yeah. Um, so and that sort of yeah. That so I'll that's one side, and then the other side is where I'll do things which I feel are a bit more contemporary. Okay. Maybe people dressed in a bit more the way I would feel like I'm dressing now. Um, so those are the two, and, th- and then I kind of get a bit more experimental with the way I apply the paint. Um, maybe a little bit mixed media dish might be bringing in some other materials, you know. Cool. Yeah. So mm-hmm. those are the two things. But the way I'll do it then is they're all I they're always single figure women. Although <laughs> I do quite like the idea of doing a double portrait on a canvas, but I'm like, nah, it's twice as much work. Yeah, exactly. Same <laughs> yes. So I won't do that. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I've, I've uh, yeah. So it will, will, I do single figures. Um, and I make them up and I spend a lot, lot of time. I've got like 30,000 images on my phone. Like I'm screenshotting and like on Pinterest, I, I've got my own sort of personal accounts where I'll just look up different artists yeah. uh, from all over the, you know, you know, history and contemporary. And it's been the use of, say, Instagram and getting to see such a wide variety of artists work and the way they work. Like lots of people will share like snippets of their process or just, you know, photos of their studio, which gives you an insight into how they work. That's taught me loads. So I'll, if I'll collect. Say if I want to do this particular painting, I will collect loads of images that kind of feed, sort of different. I'll be like, right, I'm going to have this person here, and they're going to be wearing this particular jacket or whatever, and I maybe yeah. want to, you know, and then I will draw the face, and I'll do a drawing to scale, and then I get tracing paper, and you can put the drawing onto the tracing paper. And then because I've got that wonderfully smooth canvas oh, service, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> I can then just rub the image onto the canvas. Like you just, oh. I don't know if you've ever done it, but with tracing paper, you I can know, cop, what you mean, yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And then that's when I sort of start. And then from, so, you know, I've tried to fix down as much as I can in the drawing stage. Um, I've got a rough idea. I'm going to maybe draw inspiration here for this bit and that. And, you know, mm-hmm. and I've got maybe a few sources for the face because I'll have made up the face. Um and hopefully th- I'll be able to pull that all together and make it feel realistic and alive. And I'm, my, my intention is that it doesn't look like a sort of collage of a person. I want it to feel like a real person. Yeah. I think Generally, people are sort of surprised to hear that I've made the face up. So I'm like, OK, that's great, because I want them to feel realistic. I want them to feel like they have a, per- a there's an the energy of a person in the room with you. Like I don't, I don't know if you've, if you've ever been that, had the chance to go to a big a gallery, like the National Gallery, say, in London or whatever, that loads of portraits, say, mm-hmm. and you'll see loads of them, you're like, well, this is really impressively painted, this is amazing, um, but some of them you'll really feel like that's a painting. And it's got nothing to do with how realistically it's rendered or photorealism, it's nothing about that. Because I've, I've seen, you know, for me personally, I'll have looked at, say, a sculpture of an Egyptian, you know, um, king or whatever and i'll be like oh but there are some times where they'll just capture the essence and it feels like there's a person with you wow. mm-hmm. and yeah. i don't know if it's always you know that it'll be universal for everybody for that particular piece mm. but you know sometimes you'll be like that's amazing um and uh, you know I, I for me there are some artists that you know I, I think get a higher hit rate than others and it's not what everybody's trying to do when they're doing a figurative painting but um, I remember going to see there's this Spanish court painter from, oh, I don't know when, a while ago. Uh, yeah. um, the days of yore. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they had roughs on, that kind of era. Um, but uh, they had, a, the, there was a Spanish painter called Velas- Velasquez. And, um, but he had, I remember go- managing to go and see one of the exhibitions of his work. And it was amazing the amount where you're like, there are hundreds of years passed since this was done. And yeah, I, you know, this person feels like I could meet them now wow. and they feel mm. alive. So that's like, and I was like, if I can do that, like, you know, I don't mm-hmm. even know the alchemy of it. I don't know how, you know, how that always works. Um, I'm, I'm very, very dedicated to the eye contact. Mm. Nice. Yeah, I really that, you know, everything else has changed in my work since sort of leaving college. But that's one thing that I can't really give up. I'm that, you know, um, do you mean do you mean eye contact is in the the, the painting, painting is will, looking at you yeah. looking at you yeah. when it you're can, looking at it, the painting yeah it can follow Follows you around the room, the room. Yeah. yes right. Lisa um, style yes, yes. yeah uh, it's it's like it's quite easy it's like basic sort of geometry I sort of, you know I sort of worked it out when I was in college I was like oh yeah okay fine that's quite you know but um so that's one little trick you can use and I just 
it's I love that. But uh, yeah, getting the sort of lived in us in the skin and it's this, yeah. So amazing, they are impressive. That they is, are incredible paintings. <sighs> they, are, they, they are amazing. Do you ever find it hard? You know, you say you're, you're like trawling through Pinterest and you're looking at other people's work and mm. things like that. Do you ever find it quite hard sometimes to be like, do you get like a little bit lost because obviously you want kind of your identity and your ideas mm. into your artwork? Yeah, and then if you're looking at loads of other things, does it sometimes get a bit like? I, I don't know, is if like, yeah, mm. is in like how much influence you take from other people. The, you know? the one thing that I have noticed that I've got to be careful of is I, I'm fairly confident in, I think I'm very attuned to what it is that I like, because what I'm painting is based on purely on my taste. Mm -hmm. And it's got to, it's got to be stuff that I like, or I'm trying to at least make something that I like. Um, but the one thing I do find that I've got to be very careful of, especially if I'm, you know, uh, on Pinterest or, or Instagram, for example, and I will use, you know, I will be slightly screenshotting, you know, photos of other people. Mm -hmm. and, and I've come to be very wary of taking photos that have been heavily photoshopped. Right. Because, you know, that's fine for making a photo, but I want I, it's not an aesthetic not that, that appeals to for me what I want to do for my painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially like you know because they're always women like that I paint or you know f female presenting or femme presenting people. I was going to ask that you mm. only paint only paint women. Yeah, I'm just not interested in men. John, my <laughs> husband, has often been like, "Do you want to?" I'm like, <laughs> like the Titanic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lying down. Yeah, and, it, and I'm like, you know, babe, I think you're absolutely gorgeous, but I've got no interest whatsoever. <laughs> and somebody might be like, "Do you want to do your kids?" And I'm like. No, I'm fine actually. <laughs> and there's a part of me that's like, maybe I, maybe I should, but you know, but no, I, I think because a lot of it is, um, you know, ultimately, especially because I'm making them up, it's such a reflection of my aesthetic, my ideas, like because there's this, you know, politics goes into it. I, mm -hmm. um, that ultimately, I mean, it's the same with any art though, because it's it's a part of, it's an insight into, in a certain way, you know, about who the artist is. So. They are very self portraity in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, I do see that I went, you can see that they they often follow roughly my age. Right. Like when okay. I, once I got married, I put in the odd wedding ring because I kind of like, <laughs> well, I get this now. Yeah. I can put that in. Um, will you will you continue that as you get I older? I think so. I mean, it's not to say I've not done older people. Um, I did I did one recently, which was my version of the Mabinogi Witch, um, Kuridwen. Right. And I really wanted to celebrate um her as a sort of you know an older woman so i was like so i got my mom to sort of like man babes you've got the wrinkles and i need to have a good reference <laughs> and that's you know going back to like you know instagram you don't get m m enough wrinkles yeah. so i do try if i see a good image i'm like oh, the wrinkles got it oh, <laughs> you know and, and i do i am enjoying as i get older being like oh here we go some good reference lines coming in. like you know it's I, good I, um, timelines yeah. i like to call them yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm just like oh this is gonna mm. um nice. so uh yeah i mean and i did have somebody um i had the uh, the comedian jade adams who she's very good friends i don't know if you know who she is but anyway she's from bristol um and uh She's very good friends with somebody that I, I know, you know, mutually through art in um, through in Wales. Anyway, and we were messaging once. She's like, oh, I, you know, and she, she's a she's a fat comedian and she's, you know, very she talks about that a lot in her, in her set and stuff. But she did ask me, she was like, oh, just out of interest, you know, why don't you do a lot of like, you know, fatter or bigger people? I'm like, mm -hmm. do you know what? I really struggle to find images on on the Internet, <laughs> but, wow. you know, of, of people that aren't sort of haven't been sort of molded to maybe be like a sort of acceptable image of a of a fatter person mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so she did say well if you ever need that i was like <laughs> well okay cool jane i mean this was this was after i had my cool. second kid um and i'm like i'd be well up for doing that but you know she's a very busy woman now and is you know her career's taken off so but um but yeah it's those so that that i find hard is sort of keeping those if your primary source for certain for a lot of things is I images off Instagram, say, or the internet, or just media, right? Mm -hmm. the, 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 those sort of n not sort of particularly enjoyable beauty standards can filter through. And, you, that, yeah. and the faces just come out blander. If you're doing something that's been, um, you know, copied from a sort of watered down, then yes, it's it's, it's not that interesting at the end mm. with, with what I want to try and do. Um, and make up a lot as well, like... I find I'm like, I'm, I'd rather for what I want to try and do to try and 
yeah, I, it's to sort of, yeah, I don't, to, to try and find things that are got less makeup on or none at all. Uh, like, uh, but, you know, day to day, I've not got a problem with it. But when I'm trying to do my painting, I'm like, I want to sort of, <laughs> yeah. You want to yeah. real. Yeah. I do. I yeah. think, I think there's a bit of, I also, I think a lot of it's to do with how inspired I am by sort of more classical painting where they didn't have make, do you know what I mean? It was yeah. very much, you really got to, I think there's a bit of that too. Um, so, yeah, I think that's. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Like, can, can we go back to your college days? <coughs> yes, and absolutely. Ask about that. The Central St. Martin School of Art. Is that yes. where you went? Yes, that's where I ended up, yes. What was the process of getting in there? Because I've been doing a bit of reading, and that is obviously a very prestigious place and notoriously difficult to get into. Yeah, I'm, I'm so going to sound like, yeah. Go, <laughs> tell us, what was it? What's the secret? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I was I was a bit of a jammy bastard, really. But um, I'd, I think there was a sort of... Uh, waterfall effect so i left <laughs> when i left um normally before you do a uh art degree you'll they will get you to do a foundation course because you know art very broad you know you've got somebody that could be standing in the court to like slap themselves with a spatula and that's <laughs> performance art on one end yeah. and on, on the other you've got do you know what i mean there's it's uh, this two uh, yeah who knows what right <laughs> yeah it's what on the floor with like some masking yeah. tape i've seen some things right <laughs> yeah. oh yeah so <laughs> it's it this so they like Go to a foundation course and have a go at like some of the sort of, you know, mm. photography, go sculpture, wild. yeah, go wild. print, you know, try a little bit. And then hopefully then by the time you get to the degree, you'll kind of you know. Anyway, so when I went on to the foundation course, I think the reason I got into a very good course mm -hmm. um, and it's because I think maybe I'm selling myself short. Like, yeah, I was a good artist, but, I d you know. I think um, I think what tipped me over is that because I was 19, I was going to have to pay a fee. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> if you're 18, you were going to get in free. Uh, right. So I think they're a bit like, yes, yeah, she's good enough and she'll pay. So I mean, it wasn't a wild amount of money, but um, so it was like it was like, I coin. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's kind of the the, the story I've always told myself. Um, and so I got into Byam Shaw, which is. Um, a sort of affiliate college of St. Martin's. Was that pre though, was it? Is yeah, that like, so that's yeah. before. So I think mm -hmm. that was kind of maybe got my foot in the door. Mm, okay. But um, I, I I messed around on my course. Like I would just be like, this is all quite intense. And I wasn't really doing enough work. I was just like, I'm in London. I'm going to go, I can go down to the National like, Gallery. Yeah. I'm, yeah. you know, mm. and shopping or whatever. Or, <laughs> you know, and um, so going out and they, not enough work was being done. But, the other thing that I think I was very lucky with is that, I, again, I was like, I just want to do faces. So I had this theme, and I'm not saying that this is what gets you into college, mm -hmm. but it just so, ha and I remember sat down, I had a fantastic um, tutor, um, her name was Zilke Detemeyers. I, I don't know if that's how I say her name properly. She was a German woman. Um, and we sat down with my portfolio. It was like quite thin, not enough there. <laughs> and she was just like, so we know you're not going to get in anyway. And I'm like, I know. I've already come up with a plan. It's going to be lovely, and I'll beef out the portfolio, and I'll come back next year, and then I'll I'll apply then. Um, and she's like, "Great." I mean, obviously, you know, they come to the College of Saint Martins because we're you know part of them essentially. So apply, go through the process, so you know what's involved. So I I put it in, and you know, there was the or interview, and. Um, I'd gone out the night before. I turned up in, you know, like tracky bums and a hoodie and didn't, I was just like, I'm not getting in, so it's fine. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, the way that it was announced, loads of, you know, loads of people had applied. I remember there was one guy there and, you know, his parents had met in St. Martin's and he was really like, wow. get, and he took mm. the art very seriously and he was, you know, you could see I'm like, well, you know, you're like, you know, doing really art stuff this is you know <laughs> uh well done whereas i'm just having some pictures of women and you know whatever um anyway um but they were gonna say right so we'll put up a, a sheet later on and um, those it'll tell you who's got in and I, i'm gonna i'm gonna go so i think i went to meet headed and we went out and then one of the other girls who'd also applied she's like yeah you know you've got in and i was just like oh 
Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I had the Brighton plan. Like, <laughs> I was going to go and live with uh, with Davs, who was from Aberystwyth. I like, think he was living down there. Ta- like, it's like it was all planned. I say that. It's not like I had a house <laughs> booked. I was just like in my head. Yeah. Like, um, and like, I, I, you know, coffee shop. This is, I can do that. It's fine. Um, so then I was like, it's a bird in the hand moment. I'm like, do I do mm. this? Or so I was like, my head's like, well, I'm going to still be in Rada. So I was like, okay, cool. Well, we'll just carry on then so um wow. so that's yeah so that's and uh i mean yeah and then you get to st martin's and i'll be quite frank it's a pile of shit uh yeah in what way how you oh, doing well you know so for example so like i said at the time i was um living with headed right so she went to rada yeah. we were paying the same in fees now okay. she was in a year of 30 mm-hmm. she was getting oh in terms of contact time with like um, people at the top of the, you know these people worked in Hollywood and stuff mm, you know you've got okay. um, she's getting like eight to ten hours of contact time with professionals mm. um, mm. every day they were getting Alexander technique like they were being like you know physiotherapy mm. into shape and stuff um, and they would have um, rich people would come and be like I'm going to sponsor you I'm going to give you some money help you out mm-hmm. all of this uh, they were getting fight classes dance classes um, you know uh, dramaturgy uh um, accent classes, singing whole, class, all of this, all of this, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. So what do I get? Um, I should have gone to lectures. I didn't. <laughs> I was like, I'm just, I'm finding it all a bit too much. It's in another building. And I went to the ones that I'm like, that sounds interesting, but I don't, you know. Uh, and then, but I'm like, so I'm paying all of this money essentially to have run down studio space in central London. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you'd get, wow. um, and I think you maybe get half an hour contact time every two weeks. Oh my God, it's like nothing. It's That's nothing. Totally in comparison like, to, yeah. isn't it? Rather. And you know, they were like, oh, there is a, there was a painting um, technician. The technicians were often the people who hold it, held the real knowledge, right. but they were very like over prescribed. You know, they, they were quite busy mm. or a little bit scary. Like the painting woman, I remember my friend, uh, Charlie, and um, and he's like, yeah, she's she's really scary, but she really knows her stuff. So you can like, if you can like get through the pain barrier, and I'm like, yeah, I can't get through the pain barrier. <laughs> uh. Just you go, Charlie, and you tell me about it, and then that's you know, um, and uh, yeah, and you know, and at the time we were in the we were the last to be in this old building, which is um, in central London, um, and uh, they were in the process of selling off all the different buildings they had around London to make one big central new building. So they hadn't. Uh, like it was leaking people okay. were smoking in the stairwell it's like 2007 2008 we're not talking 1960 no. whatever no, exactly. you know and i'm um, like yeah and you know it's quite you've got the whole like you have crits um and i will say i think for our year people weren't too nasty but that's basically where you're like so i've been working on this and then they'll be like so rip it to shreds you know is what it can be and you heard about mm. other schools and stuff and they'd be like Oh God, it was awful. Like they cried and this. So it wasn't quite that bad in St. Martin's, but I'm just like, oh, gee, you know, but I, yeah. So it was. Did you enjoy your time there at all? And did you, did you learn? I enjoyed being able to, because what was wonderful is that it was really close to the natural, n- National Gallery. So you've yeah. got, you know, a Montrafalgar Square. So that's where I went. Mm. I was going down yeah. there. Um, what, taking inspiration and yeah. things like that? Yeah. Yeah. I just loved yeah. it. You know, I remember be going down there one day. And it was just me all alone in a room with Van Gogh's um, sunflowers. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. why is nobody else here? I don't understand. Mm. Do you not, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's where I, you know, and they're all a bit like, okay, so you like old paintings, but what about, you know, the person hitting their face with a spatula? Like, do you know, <laughs> what, what about more contempt? Um, you know, that's a bit like flippant, but you know, I'm just like, that's great. But I'm like, but I'm not past this yet. I've really, this yeah. is some, this is where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're trying to sway you from your yes. passion and your style. They, they, they you know, they've, there's a, because they've got quite, I don't know how else to, but it's quite a sort of a contemporary. They want you to be sort of like on the cutting edge. But I'm just like, okay. all of these people are going to get there in different ways. Mm. Um, it's good to be different. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and I think if you're. It's more I, free, isn't it? Exactly. It's and if free. you, yeah, if you're willing to stick to, I, I, you know, I, I was, because it also looked like a lot of hard work. You did see people who were really like, okay, I'm going to take what you're suggesting and I'm really going to roll with it. I'm really going to invest in it. Um, but I think if you don't hone what, you know, your voice, what you want to do, 
because that's one thing I do f- out of sort of stubbornness, maybe a bit of laziness, really. Because I'm like, I find it easy to do what I like, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's that stood me really well. Um, and I think um, it's sort of allowed me to have um, a, a bit of a career, really. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that's it. You know, that it did through sort of the sort of the freedom you're like well I've got to structure this somehow yeah um but you know like I I'd, I'd, I'd really checked out of what was happening you know academically um I remember somebody being like it was the office they were like yes yeah, so if you don't bring in this work now you're gonna fail and you're not gonna be here next year and I was like okay cool I'm like what do I need to bring <laughs> for it they're like yeah, so just bring your portfolio. You need to, you know, and just you've got to put it, set it up in this studio. But you've got until two o'clock. So I'm like, oh my god, like Addison Lee, and like <laughs> trying to get almost, you know. Um, and I remember coming back in on the second year and somebody being like, I didn't think you were going to be here. I thought you'd have been. <laughs> I was like, Do you know what? Me too. Um, but I got in by the skin of my teeth. And then you know, then people would be clamouring at the end of. Um, you, I suppose I, I hadn't really realised that you were getting marked at the end of each term. Yeah. You know, and people were like, Oh yeah, do you, I got you know so and so percent on all this. And I'm like. They've not kicked me out, so that's fine. Like Still, I don't, yeah. 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 Still going. So I'm like, I don't really know what's, you know. Um, and I managed to get a, a two-one just about, and I'm like, that's like respectable, isn't that's it? That's good. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely good. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just like, that's fine. I got yeah. honours. It means nothing. Like I, it means after I could have got a third, and it, maybe you you could spin it as street cred. I, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so when did you realise that you could actually make a career out of it then, and start? professionally doing it well I was, I was quite lucky that um some curator had been around had seen my work and was just like and you know this this curator she was the same age as me she was and she had been um I don't know if she was being paid or was uh, internship because obviously there's a massive amount of like come and work for free in the art world and you oh, know yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure. so I but I'm not quite <coughs> sure you know she was she was a fantastic curator she's still working these days but um she saw my work and um, she was working for the time for this uh, gallery in Notting Hill called, at the time, Salon Contemporary. Turned out this guy changed the name of the gallery very often because he was an absolute crook. Um, <laughs> but I got in there and uh, I managed to not let him be a crook with me. But, you know, that took having to take my paintings off the wall when I realised he was maybe not going to pay me. Oh. But, yeah, so, yeah. There oh was, was that your first, well, meant to be paid sort of gig then? I yeah, suppose. I did get money out of him. But uh, I had to go in with my my friend's burly boyfriend and we'd rented a van. And I'm like, either you pay me for that painting that you sold. Because I only found out because I was at the opening and one of the interns were like, oh, I must say I sold one of your paintings. I'm like, which one? I don't know. (laughs) Um, And... uh, yeah, he would wow. get. I remember him one time being like, "Yes, yeah, so you know that drawing that of yours we sold. God, terrible thing is, um, somebody ran into the uh, gallery, stole it off the wall. <laughs> Could you make another one really quickly so they don't know?" And I was just like, "Uh, oh, yeah." She's like, "We'll pay you twice. Don't worry about it." And he did. Okay. But I was just like, hand it over, sort of in the pan. He's like, "Yeah, if you could get it done by, you know, you know, next week, week or something I'm like, sure, fine." It was like really detailed drawing of mine. And then in hindsight, it's like, I'm getting paid twice, but this guy's just sold it twice. He's just sold it twice. Yeah, I was ask you, yeah, did it get stolen? Like, no, he didn't get right. stolen. He just wanted to get paid twice for the one. I'm like, yeah. it's kind of not, you know. I bet yeah. a lot of that goes on. In the world, oh, and this, oh, yeah. Uh, but this guy got, he got, he got sued to to smithereens. But these these people have ways of. Was he claiming like bankruptcy and then opening a different? Yeah, he was doing yeah. that. Oh, that old yeah. chestnut, classic. probably. That old chestnut. Yeah. That, that is a cla- Another thing I was going to ask. You, obviously, you don't need to talk numbers at all. But how do you even decide? What, yeah. You, particularly for your first um, art piece, and you said you sold it stuff. Mm. How, how would you even like put a figure on it? I don't, I don't even know how that would. Or, or would they help you? Well, with the yeah. Gallery etc. Galleries. Like I that, mean, yeah. you know, they, if a gallery should be. Because it's in their interest, right? They're going to yeah. assess them what they feel like they can sell your work for. Got you. And they'll kind of like sort of set a rough benchmark. And then essentially it's down to size and material. So Right, okay. If I then suddenly start doing paintings with loads of gold on and I'm doing it, say, on linen rather than cotton, mm-hmm. then it's going to up it a little bit more but just because the material is a little okay. bit. But that doesn't make a mm. massive amount of difference unless you're talking like solid bronze sculpture versus plaster pad or something like that. Yeah. But um, and then it's basically just like what you can get away with. And if you can if it sells and stuff like that, yes. I suppose. And, and yeah. you know, uh, I mean, because now that I'm 
so, but basically, from the back of doing this brief stint with this criminal in Notting mm. Hill, um, uh, I got ch- mum was just like, I think she told the Cambrian news like, oh yeah, so my daughter she's doing a solo exhibition in London. They're like, oh, okay, so they did a thing, and then <laughs> somebody in um, somebody in Abba, her friend was setting up a gallery in Cardiff, or I can't remember what it was. Oh no. I don't know how it was. S was were like, there's a Welsh person. They've got a solo <laughs> exhibition in London. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I think they gave me a little spot on S Pedorek. And then this person mm-hmm. saw this. And there was somebody in Cardiff at the time, um, Kat Gardner, who is my gallerist, uh, one of my gallerists to this day. Um, she saw this bit on S4C and was like, I'm about to start doing this herself. So she, yeah. So with, and then I've been with her since. 2009 10 i think mm, um and uh yeah and then i i got a second gallery oh 2014 or something i can't remember which is fina park up in uh land roost in uh, north wales mm-hmm. um so yeah i mean but also you know in terms of pricing as well for example like the welsh market it's a it's a much poorer country, right? So mm-hmm. we haven't got this massive, massive wealthy class in the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, so that will obviously it kind of caps your prices to a certain extent. Like you've got like cuts. Otherwise, it won't go. Like, at no, all. no. Mm-hmm. and and I do sometimes work, and I'm like, wow, I'm what's I've done a gallery and I've paid it in a. I'm working for less than minimum wage it's in terms of the hours that go into it. But I'm yeah, just a bit yeah. like, it's where we're at. And, you know, some people be like, well, you should work faster. And I'm just like, yeah, I know. But also, if you want the work that only I can make, That's it's going to be my process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to pay, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it's 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 like once you, st- you know, money and art, it's, it's, it's a funny thing. I mean, the art world and the financial world are like this, right? And... And so it does make you think like there's something a bit, you know, it makes it sort of sums up my sort of suspicions about the entire endeavor. But we all live in under capitalism. So you've got to make it work, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, yeah. Because it's such a smaller market in Wales as well. Like the pond is a lot smaller. So I have been very lucky, I think, because of that, that I've been able to have work to sell. Um, and I feel that, you know, with, with Wales, we're, we're not a history that's like, we're not a nation rich in visual history. Like, you know, if you think of Wales, you think more like literature, mm-hmm. music, music mm-hmm. yeah. you know. Um, mm-hmm. So I think we're very, and especially now with sort of people here um, taking note of the national identity a bit more and what does it mean to be Welsh and who mm-hmm. are we as Wales, what is contemporary Wales. So I think um, people are very keen to try and find little examples of that and so that's I think is is a big part of of the market and it's one that I'm I'm really happy to be in because I I can't not sort of you know I think having spent 15 years in London not quite understanding that I was quietly grieving the entire time not being back in a home yeah and then the realization of being like I've been so sad that I've not been been able to live at home for so long so it's it's and I've you know I'm not feigning the interest like I have a an innate sort of obsession with thinking about what it is to be Welsh you know what is Welshness what is it to have a national identity is there such a thing you know what's universal what's specific um, and so yeah and I think maybe some of that is because I was like yearning to be home mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. what's the phrase hiraith isn't it. Uh, yes, yeah, and I was like, yeah, oh God, it was proper here. You know, the the, the sadness of not being home. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it, it was deep here, I think. So, uh, but I was only able to really be like, oh God, I've been sad when the with COVID and my husband's potential job being able to be done from home and us moving. That I was like, I really wanted to be home for such a long time. <laughs> if we can do this, that would be amazing. Because you know, I get to do my dream job. I can sort of do it anyway. I send the paintings in. You know. Yeah. Um, whereas your job was really very much in the British Museum, so when that when he stopped working there, it was like okay. And I so yeah, I was like oh, I just want to be home. I mean, you know, kids, family, you want to pass that on, yeah, that sort yeah. of connection to to home and land and language. So yeah, language as well, I suppose, from schools. Mm. Yeah. And then I was like, I remember when we were starting the process of having a family, and I was like, 
because it is a London Welsh school, but it is in like posh place in the other side of London. Um, but you know, and it's only got a small fee uh, annually. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, maybe if I, t- and once they've done the new railway, and I could maybe if I got a studio, and I'm just like to try and get to yeah. have a Welsh education, and just yeah. like I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. Um, so are you happy with the decision? Yeah, oh. sorry, Dave. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, it's uh, I pinch myself every day. Wow. And and John as well is like it's this wonderful. But you know, because John, he's from South East London, mm-hmm. um, in um, a suburb uh, called Beckenham, and um, but you know, uh, by the time his parents were buying houses, uh, and and then he went to a private school. He sounds very posh. He isn't, but um, he was going to a private school in South West London. And so he doesn't quite have connection to place in the same way. And now, of course, he's never going to be able to afford where his parents lived. Yeah. They like million pound houses now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, the, you know, and that's, I think, is a lot with um, people um, in London is, you know, there's no way to have that connection to a place because it is a money making machine. And if you can't keep up with this, like a massive, massive I bubble, so. it's not for humans. It's for making money. It's, yeah. it's about grind, making money, and it kind of chews you up and spits you out. And um, and I was just like, I could be a multimillionaire in London and it could never buy the situation that I've got in ABBA. No. No. Having mm. the, you know, the, the, the seaside and the access countryside, just, just that alone. Mm. Um, I, always look, I, sorry, I always look upon London as very soulless. Mm. Um, I've been there a handful of times in my life just for concerts or whatever. And mm. I just, everybody just seems miserable. It is, yeah. And, and highly strong. It's it's yeah. It's not a place built for. No. For, it's like uh, like the only uh, the. I'm not made for it. I couldn't do it. No, no, it was it was it's exhausting. I like the way I feel about it is like, you know, you're going through your daily life, but through quicksand. It's just everything is harder and a <laughs> lot more expensive. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, and John is just like I just can't believe we live here, and so I am glad that you know, and I, sometimes I'll be like. Because I do feel very responsible for the move because we wouldn't be here otherwise. How does yeah. John feel? Is, is he happy? Yet? He's absolutely thrilled with Amazing. it. Amazing. He's really thrilled with it. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, having Welsh lessons through, um, through his job and stuff. And so he's, nice. yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I, we just, the fact that I can pass on, because like I said, if John had like a competing sort of relationship with the place, that would be a bit different. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we'd have had to have worked that out, but it's like, well, so, sorry, babes, you're not you're not bringing the same thing to the table. It's not it's not <laughs> somewhere like London or Beckenham yeah. uh, is really going to offer, you know. Um, so to be able to have that, that's something that I can we can pass on to our kids, yeah. even if they go off. I do think there's something so wonderful, and it's obviously it's not just Wales that offers it, or you know, but. Uh, to have a sense of place that belonging, even if you go away, you you're more likely than not mm. gonna always call somewhere like this home. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, yeah. And so I, I just think it's so important. Such a good place to bring up kids. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it it's really amazing. is. And so I do feel really lucky that I can also pass that on to them. Hopefully, um, and like I said, with them, they're gonna you know go, they go to the Welsh school. Or well, Glenn hasn't started yet, but you know to the, just have the language. Yeah. Um, which you know for me is, is very important. Um, yeah, I just and it's it's important to John as well. He's you know he's he's fully behind it. Um, yeah, we just it's you can't you can't money can't buy it really. Can't no. 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 People aim for this lifestyle in their like retirement. We're kind of doing it now. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I look yeah. at. Yeah. It's, it's time, isn't it? Yeah. To the suburbs and then oh, have yeah. kids, but this is not a sort of version of it, I suppose. But it's yeah. way yeah. better in the suburbs because it's rural Wales, isn't it? You yeah. Know? Yeah. We were we were trying we were trying to be like when before John had fully sort of like you know I I basically you know I can sort of come up with an idea on a dime and be like, well, this is the best idea. We're going to just do it, right? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we were like, right, well, we're going to have another baby. We're in a really small two-bed house. The vacant house in this terrace has um, unfortunately got squatters in it who smoke so much meth that it's coming through the walls. So we really need to really need to get out. Yeah, yeah. Get out, uh, yeah. That doesn't sound ideal. <laughs> no, it was, it was like, you know, all during lockdown and stuff. Um, but, you know, 
uh, uh, the London housing market is savage and the place sold in two minutes despite I mean, really yeah I mean the place that's good I, I it's, it's wild well, though isn't it I'm yeah. like don't mind the dead body but as you can see we've got this nice spacious kitchen like and people yeah. be like I just I'm so desperate I'll take the house it's fine <laughs> look yeah. at my yeah. postal yeah. code what yeah. is the postal code is it in yeah. London you're like yeah, yeah. what yeah. school's got nearby yeah somebody had been um, unfortunately had been shot and killed uh, behind the back wall of our garden i think a week that like the police state was still up you know it was it, it's um Bonkers. it is yeah but um i mean like i said my neighbors were wonderful like it was a lovely place um in in other ways but uh yeah but i think sorry what what did you ask me i've got remember. no um, <laughs> i can't remember we're, we're all on tangents here we'll go yeah. on tangent but, uh, i think it well I no i can't remember uh Happy living. The John, if John was happy living here, yeah. Oh yeah, no, he's, yeah. he absolutely think, yeah. loves it. Yeah. We're just yeah, and uh, just things like air quality as well. Oh the, yeah, the, like, a, it's the sea. Nice. The sea, the sea, the sea. The sea. The sea. Being able to watch the sun set into a sea. <sighs> yeah, I know. I just that I cannot. It cannot be beaten. No, or dolphins on like South Beach. No. Or, like, um, <laughs> I don't know. It's amazing. Um, you touched on sort of being spontaneous in your sort of personality. I was thinking about, we sort of asked a bit about this, but um, do you find it hard to be like spontaneously creative with a young family oh. as opposed to seeing like, oh, I've got like, because I'm not an artist or anything like that, but I understand what it's like to be like spontaneous. You think like, I want to do something now and I've got the energy to do it now mm. and I want to do it now. But then I guess you can't no. in some points of the day. No, it's it. That's quite hard. Like uh, at the end of the summer, I sort of had a, a sort of a creative like mind explosion, and I was like, <gasps> I could really actually do something with ceramics, but with the painting. And so then Ooh. I was like, frantically, you know, like <laughs> researching it, being like, and jo I was like, John, I, I don't think it's like amazing. And then I just had to sit on my hand, and I'm like, and to this to this point, like, I, I managed to get onto the uh, I did I started the evening class in the art center to do ceramics so that's two hours every Tuesday um but I'm just like so I've got to wait till next Tuesday more, more, I'm more, also more, more. really tired um I don't know how I'm gonna oh god and I'm like I've made I don't know how many pieces of work in my head with mm. and I'd like to maybe do a bit of glass over here now you know all of these things to do sort of add with the painting and um I've been able to not be able to do much about it and then that's not surprising <laughs> yeah, no. <but laughs> no and also there's like the money as well I'm like mm. yeah oh, I don't know I'm going to be able to ever give these things a go because it takes a lot of money and I haven't got the time to earn the money because I can't afford childcare so <laughs> I'm in a bit of a bind yeah. here yeah, yeah. I think I'm just going to wait until eventually you get something you know more free from you know through the government or whatever but um, yeah so that's quite difficult and there's a part of me that's just, you, what you don't want to do you're like I know I know this is a pretty good idea but if it gets stale and you've kind of like done in your head too much, hmm, it's past. It's you're like, am I going to not do this? And that would be a real shame. And you sort of get ground down by like, well, you've just got to get this next thing out. And you just end up having to do a little bit of what you know. Again, and you're like, well, I've, I've only got the materials to do this. So that's it, it is difficult in that sense. Hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's that's not all the time. But like I said, this 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 towards the end of the summer on August, I was just like, I could do it. I could do this thing, um, and these don't happen often. Where I sort of feel like this big trajectory change in how I work, mm -hmm. um, and so that that's. But I'm just like, just it'll be okay. We'll work it out. It's fine. We just gotta, you know. Glenn's got. He's 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 two and a bit now. Oh, we'll maybe get a bit more once he's three, and mm. we'll try and do it then. And mm. you know, yeah. but so is that is that something you're thinking of next then? Um, so you, you're doing these wonderful paintings of women. Yeah. And is that going to be possibly your next avenue of well, creativity I, or Yeah, both? I want to do so that uh, the way, I mean, it's, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, maybe don't don't say it because you don't know if you're going to be able to do it. And then what if you sound like, you know, all trousers, you know, you know, mm. all fur coat, no knickers type thing. So, um, but I, what I want to, I could never not paint. I do think that, um, I was talking to my mum about this because she, so she's an artist as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you know, different certain artists might be quite multidisciplinary and might do all sorts. But I'm like, no, for me, it is about getting paint and putting it on a canvas. Like I wouldn't be sad. Like drawing is a big part that builds that, and I really enjoy the process of like coming up with it. But the satisfaction is in painting on a flat surface. Mm. 
Mm. So I can, I, that is the thing <laughs> um, that, that I really have to do. So what I wanted to do was try and, the idea is I'm, I've never enjoyed framing. Like, you know, I just am a bit like, gallery's a bit like, oh, you know, it's good for the people like to buy things that they can put on their wall. I'm like, well, I can, I make it so that the edges are tidy. I don't know what, <laughs> they look better without the frame. Anyway, fine, just, okay, if we've got to do the frame, we'll do the frame. I'm paying for it. Oh, Jesus Christ, you know. Yeah. Um, but, um, but then I was like, I loved, I used to do ceramics in the art center as a kid. Yeah. And then I thought maybe if I could do like frames, but out of ceramics in like more sculptural way. And I was <laughs> like, oh, this could work. Whoa, yeah, okay. And so, you know, I, it was through happy accident that I tried something out with one of my paintings on this quite sc sculptural shelf that I bought. And I was like, if I could make those somehow, you know, so that was sort of the idea there. So we'll see. But like I said, well, what do you need? You need the materials and you need that kiln, right? Mm. And the know-how. Like I do find now oh, yeah. I'm getting into ceramics. Like this is chemistry. Like this is, <laughs> oh, this is quite, this is a real, you know. I, d I dabble in pottery with um, Penru pottery. Up in oh. the TM, and I can't believe David. He knows so much that I can't even imagine yeah. getting to no, at that it's level. It's just that he's a master. It's amazing, right? And what's wonderful with something like that, as is with painting, but ceramic, like, they've, we've been doing this since they've been humans. Yeah. And they've worked yeah. out how to turn mud. Yeah. And, like, phenomenal. it's amazing. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It's unbelievable. So, yeah, I'm just like, this is why I couldn't do something like photography. I find technology, like, a bit too... I, the thing that me, like, somebody's like, well, you can frame up a thing. I'm like, no, if you give me a camera, I become sort of, like... I don't know, you know, like, I just can't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just like, well, I just do it. I'll just put everything in the middle, right? <laughs> Whereas, <Yeah. laughs> you know, um, and, uh, yeah, so I, with uh, pottery, I'm a bit like, again, it's quite, it's quite like technology here, but it's fine. We'll just, I'm going to, you can do this, Ellen, you can learn the thing, you know. <laughs> so we'll see. But I'm like, I've got to, I've got to try doing this. And I'll have to work out if, I'm like, if this does work out, though, I can't be just doing this in evening classes on a Tuesday. Really, I need a kiln. And then yeah, I'm you like, need to do it yourself. Yeah. Could somebody please give me ten thousand pounds? I like, right? <laughs> I don't you know. It's um, yeah, yeah. So there's, there, I'm like, we'll deal with that problem if it ever comes up. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but um, yeah. So the, it, that is a bit, a bit difficult. And the, there's a part of you that was like, I want to show you this idea and see how it, you know what people think of it. And you also want to be like, show your like, sort of peers type of thing and be like, what do you think of this thing? Yeah, like, of it's quite interesting, isn't it? <laughs> you don't see a lot like this. I, you know, not that that's a, a huge like thing of it, but you also do want to be a bit like, maybe I don't think it's not, <laughs> yeah. not me. Yeah. You know, and then this part is like, God, if I leave this any longer, what if somebody else starts doing this? And it's like, it's stupid mentality. <laughs> yeah. But you can feel it. It's like, it's, it's just it another like way of like the TikTok, like expressing itself, right? It sounds so, like the mentality of an inventor though, you know? I, there is a bit of that. You, you're inventing something. Like you want to do it. niche. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, it's not really for anything apart from visual enjoyment and, you know, to stimulate yourself, I guess. But um, yeah, no, it, you are like inventing these really specific things that are just for you in a sense but yeah, yeah there is it's that but uh that's cool yeah. um, really cool you come from like a very creative and artistic family mm. can you see it in your kids already is i i don't know i mean kids have it in them innately right yeah but can you can you see a different is it in the blood i don't know i don't know you see because i what i don't want to do um well, firstly, I like what well, Glynn's too. So at the moment, course, yeah, there isn't much there. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just whatever. Um, yeah. Um, and then and my mum's like, oh, let him paint. And I'm like, are you going to deal with a mess? So I'm, I'm a bit like, <laughs> yeah. so we haven't explored Glynn's. You will eat that. Artistic. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, I just haven't got the bandwidth. Um, but with Dovery, she's, yeah, there's, you know, I mean, I, it's, it's hard to tell in the, what's the sort of, you know, my measuring stick it's probably been like melded by, you know, sort of quite boring grown up idea. Do you know what I mean? And like, hmm. is it quite representative in a realistic way? You know, whatever it is. So, but um, at this point, like genuinely, I'm like, I don't know. But not, often people be like, 
so definitely have you taken after your mum and I'm like <laughs> well if she has don't kill it don't put the pressure on <laughs> yeah, it like, no, exactly. just, like just let her do a thing we're just going to be like if you want to you can if you don't yeah, you know don't be that pushy parent no and I would so <laughs> And, and I think if she's anything like me, that sense of ownership over what you're doing and you don't want anybody like, don't tell me what to do. Do you know mm, what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and my mom is very much like that as well. Um, and you're like, this is the, my thing. And I'm going to, you know. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I've, I, I gave her as much opportunity. You know, she started ceramics now. And I was thrilled when she was like, yeah, sod the ballet. I want to do this instead. I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, so. Uh, you could touch it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, so there's there are, there's that, um, yeah. but yeah, we'll have to see. Um, but you know, I all of her drawings, like you know, kids, like they churn out so much, and I I'm I find is it, it on the fridge? Is it in the bin? Oh, at the moment, it's <laughs> I was going to ask that. That's what I go. I'm like, um, <laughs> there are some times where I'm like. <laughs> It's just a bunch of sticker babes, like that's it we is. bought that stuck in on yeah. paper. I haven't fun. been there. We no. yeah, yeah. find it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Still in your bag. It's got to be in your bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't look at the recycling. Don't look at that clear plastic bag outside <laughs> with the recycling. Yeah, Debbie did make uh, out of a big cover box a fridge, and I'm like, and it was oh. in our. Yeah, it was honestly, it was like sort of s- s- almost like human size. You know what I mean? And I'm like, it's just some pipe cleaners on it. This is. I'm like. <laughs> How long is she going to be until she comes blind to it and we can get rid of it? Exactly. Yeah. On the sly, yeah. throw it. <laughs> and, then, yeah, and then John is like, oh, don't worry. It's about- so terrible, mate. Secret. Yeah. Here's what happens. Yeah. And I was like, John, get rid of it, okay? <laughs> well, she's, it's fine. She won't notice. No. And, and then I thought he'd put it in the bin and we were heading out this was over half term and we walked past and it was just there on the street waiting for the bin men and I was walking <laughs> past I was like okay so where are we going to go now though? Should we going to like luckily turn, she didn't see it but it's just like the, the big like pointless cardboard fridge thing and I'm like there was you know like had she painted it loads or something I'd be like okay it maybe lasted another few weeks I don't know but we can't yeah. keep it indefinitely whereas my mum was like you know very precious grammar she's like oh no you've got to Gotta keep it. I'm like, do you? Do you want the box? You keep it. You have the box yeah. then. She's you can like, visit again. Visit the fridge. Yeah. Do you think there's enough for kids around here, art wise? Um, Making it more sort of inclusive for children, families. I mean, I do think mm. that um, Aberystwyth does offer a lot mm-hmm. for the size that it is, um, and mm. I, I do wonder sometimes. You know, when I was um, in London. 2005 you know doing starting out in in college there and stuff you know uh there were quite a few people from abed ended up in rada which is really hard to get into it's impressive um it is you impressive. know you're with like taran and i think gwyneth and hedith and there's becky smith williams loads, you know from quite a small town and i think that was due in large part to say what the art center offered with oriel martin and mm. you know yeah. um and uh, all these t- so i think that was quite you know you can sort of see it but i think it's um i think with schools what's offered in schools from what i can understand like you know that's all being cut it's not school's fault but i think different one i think if you got a, a you know an okay amount of money i do think that the prices of the class in the art center for example are very reasonable for what you're getting mm-hmm. um but it's not to say that it isn't a big chunk of change for some families and stuff yeah, of course it is, yeah. so i yeah i don't know it's a difficult one um i think and uh, in terms of like a, a cultural venue type thing that has exhibitions on like i'm thinking very visual art obviously at the moment but um you know it's for a you've got with the clever guest as well and we've got the local um museum like i do think there is a good amount of stuff there but then I mean, I, I'm not a very good judge of that because I was in London before, which is, is, is you know, obviously there's there's a lot of, yeah, I bitched and moan about in London, but in terms of cultural stuff to go visit, you can't move for it, right? Like, yeah. it's it's incredible. So I don't, I'm not very good at judging, but so it's, it's hard, yeah, it's, it's a different You need one. the funding as well, I suppose, don't you? And then, mm. I, as you said, people don't have a lot of, like, spare money no. and stuff like that, so you're no. trying to, like, prioritise your funds so it'd be nice if you had some maybe mm. grants or money from the government to sort of like push I the arts a little bit it but it's not be, really yeah. no it's not happen. because they think it's it's not it's not big bucks isn't it? it's not no. like uber and stuff like well these big clean, I, I don't know what they don't really tax so i don't know anyway that's no, a separate conversation. Yeah. but <laughs> if, if they want to get people into all of these yeah just like oh you know they have that thing during covid like why didn't you retrain to become like i can't remember what it was but they had these things like 
don't be a ballet dancer. Retrain to become, that. and you're just like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. ruin the art. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. I don't. I also don't think mm. there's not enough jobs anyway. <laughs> but there's anyway. But by the way, but um, but then you know, uh, thinking about what London has to offer, there's lots to do on a rainy day in London. Because, but then you can't go to the sea, you can't go up the woods. Is it? So, you know, and yeah, which I do I think is also a creative outlet, like to be able to go out there and do that and feel of that. Of course it is. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, it, it offers different things. Um, do you know what's going to be awesome is that the old college on the seafront when that's finished? Fi- yeah. Yeah. It's it, looking good, that is. It looks amazing. Yeah. 2026, I think that's going to be open. Is it? Yeah. Is it? I believe so. Because I know the date. They, it was a bit bumpy, wasn't it? I lost think, the contract the or something. I think it's because of the yeah the cost of materials and things it yes. just went through the roof over mm-hmm. COVID, yeah. It? yeah. But now it's building, looking though. It, it, is, oh, yeah. it is such an amazing building. Mm. I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do. Yeah, John was you know because having he worked sort of in the with, in the British Museum. So in terms of like similar sector, in terms of a, a sort of a project like that, never did one that size. But he was like, well, it says this and this, and I'm like, babe. This is Wells time. Like, I, I don't know if it's going to be done by then. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll Put see. Put it back but, yeah. 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 Like, I think they're probably still pulling this best or something. Like, I don't know. But <laughs> Maybe. I, I, but yeah, I do. I do hope that it's. Um, it does get. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to it. It's. I mean, yeah. it's a beautiful building. And it's nice to see it uh, looked after. Um, so yeah, yeah. Have you ever that. been in the music room there? The one. Mm. It's just. You know the big annex right in the middle. Mm. It's the one furthest towards the pier. It's the big, big room. Oh there. right. So a little interesting thing. Um, if you look up, mm. there's there's beautiful hand carved mm. arch, sort uh, yeah. of um, artistic things. Yeah. I don't know what to call them. Florets, I think they okay. are. Okay. But you can see on the third one, I think it is. You can see where they down tools because they weren't getting paid. Oh wow. And they, the last cuts are still just there. That's amazing. It's like unfinished, yeah, unfinished, unfinished because, because they were like unfinished. not getting paid. They're just like blocks with like a few chisel hits out of them. Great. Little bit of um you know, working class protest. Yeah. It's yeah. still yeah. into there still we go. In the blood. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's all part yeah, that's that's a that's a nice bit of I history. Really I really like that, that yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I saw um, I saw through your Instagram, so it's it's quite related. Like you had a couple of pictures of was it Queen Victoria? Or a a a very I, regal looking Oh, woman. I did. Back in the day, this yeah, was... Yeah, I scrolled down a lot. Very, yeah. yeah. So, but I, I, luckily, I don't post very often. But, um, yeah, the back in the day, I did one, and I think it was almost like a... I was sort of a bit like... I really like this. It was a portrait of a Tudor. She was yeah. Tudor court, and at the time, uh, Queen Elizabeth I was in, um, on, on the throne. So, she... What she liked dictated fashion. So, this... I can't remember who it was. Right. And I think it was an unknown individual but they said it looked like a young Elizabeth and I did sort of my version trying to render it in a sort of with a bit more because obviously they'd have done every stitch every pearl you know rendered perfectly and it I mean Mm. beautiful right and I was like I I don't have to do these things often a lot of my what looks like stylistic choices like I can't paint material in that way Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in doing that yeah so I'm gonna find my way of doing it Mm -hmm. so you know it's the imperfections but um yeah, that was a straight copy, almost really. And I just it was learning how to do these these old fashioned faces. Well, they're not the, but you know the the way of doing yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, that era had a, a particular style, I think, didn't it? I, yeah, Especially I, for faces, definitely. Mm, yeah, yeah, you know, and they obviously it's it really shows sort of like the the fashions and the cosmetic kind of like the the aesthetic ideas of time. Yeah. But uh, very pale as well, wasn't it? But even because oh, yeah. because of obviously like people working outside, I think, not yes. really that fashionable to be working outside and having a tan. No, you want to be no. inside like ivory. I think <laughs> on what they were like mercury or lead or something. I don't yeah. know what they were doing, but yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, no, it's uh, no. So I, th- uh, that's you know, it's like at the beginning. You know, you're trying, you're copying other painters, mm-hmm. moderately, kind of working out. And I think it was also like I'd sort of done it a little bit for myself. And then the guy was like, "Well, I need, you know, this was the the crook in Notting Hill. I need, you know, <laughs> twenty paintings in three months." And I'm like, "What? That's <laughs> that's nuts." So, but um, uh, yeah. So I think it was like, "Well, I got this one," you know. So that that's where, that, yeah. I mean, people really like that actually. But I'm like, "Well, I didn't." <laughs> Didn't really add much to that, but you know, there we go. <laughs> have you got a favourite artist then? <clears throat> oh, that changes a lot. Um, I have lots of people that I keep coming back to. Like I do like a lot of the classical ones, but um, I, you know, I discover so much on Instagram. Like you know, you can. There's a lot that um, you know that's terrible about social media. Yeah. But in terms of something like Instagram, and for me as a as a visual person, and that there are other artists that are using it, that I have learned 
more off Instagram and getting to see what other artists and how they do it. Mm. Um, I can't remember when John, like, it was, I was sort of a bit late to it and um, he's like, yeah, you should get on Instagram. I think it was about 2012-ish. Yeah. And um, I remember going on there and I learned more in like the first sort of few weeks, just looking at what other artists were doing and I did in my entire degree in terms wow. of like, do you know what I mean? Just in terms of skill and just being like, oh my God, this and it's is... so quick. Yeah. That, that's the amazing side of the internet, isn't it? It has a terrible mm. side as well. But I guess yeah. if you're, if, if you're following just the creative stuff and, and, and I guess you're following the positive things and you're just mm. looking at that, then it, then it works, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, community sharing information on how to do things, trends and stuff you get to see. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of I'll, there are a, it's kind of what I'm looking at at the time, but there are ones that I'll come back to time and time again. And there's a difference between what inspires my work a lot and what helps me push things forward or mm -hmm. skills or sort of techniques um, and the artists that I follow for that. I might not even actually like particularly like the work that just like, sure. I wouldn't put that on my wall, mm -hmm. but I really appreciate the way you're doing it and also your, how you're sharing you know, the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's that side of it. And I look at even like nail technicians, like the way what nail artists do with yeah, paint is that like it's amazing, you know, like magnetic pigments to get it to the sparkle in the same yeah. way with magnets. It, and how small it is. It's, it's small, yeah, you know, micro. and and they're working with, you know, they can do them quite sculptural now. And so, you know, there's that stuff. And then there's stuff that I'm just like, <coughs> if I had money, I'd fill my house with that. But I'm like, maybe not rendering work in the same way. Um, but, you know, I mean, one one artist at the moment that I'm really interested in and, you know, there's aspects of his work where I'm like, well, you're not, you're kind of failing there. And I don't mean that, but his name's Ben, Ben Sledson, I think his name is. He's from, from the Netherlands. And, but, I, you know, I'm kind of sort of really enjoying looking at work that reminds me a lot of the magic you see in illustrative work that you'd have really enjoyed as a kid. Like, I don't know about you, but you might have had the odd book you know with wonderful illustrations in that just caught your imagination as a child yeah. yeah and and there's something about that magic and i've come back to some of them as a grown-up and i've just been like yeah still hits the spot and there's something really fantastical about it and i've i think coming back to you know my home where i grew up as a child and then you know starting the ceramics like i did as a child i mm. want to try and look again at um you know, these these things that inspired my imagination as a child. So looking at illustration now, which is what I'm doing a lot, and this, I find this artist's work, Ben Sledson, it's like, they're a bit like illustration, um, sort of in woodland a lot of the time. And I'm like, being back here and being able to go out a lot, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing something maybe a bit more outdoorsy in terms of like, you know, setting my people right, more yeah, outdoors. Okay. So uh, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm just, but I want to that sense of, you know, when you sometimes step into, so with the, you know, you get these illustrations, it captures that sense you sometimes get when you, you know, you, you'll you step into this bit of the woods and it's kind of mossy and it feels really private and quiet and almost like safe, like you're indoors, but you're outdoors and it's magical. I don't know. I can't explain mm -hmm. it. So there's, there's that moment. That's the thing that I'm really looking at. And I'm, you know, Pinterest is amazing as well because it links the algorithm is about being like, well, you like this. Here's five other things like yeah. that, right? <clears throat> yeah. So you can you can go off on these tangents. Um, so that's those are yeah. So at the moment, Ben Sledson sort of in the middle of it, and I'm sort of looking at other stuff. But then you know, I look at him being like, well, he can't do figures for shit, really. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not that wild about how he's done. Like you know, you can't like, do it all. I suppose. No, yeah. but I'm then I'm like, but the way that it's feeding into sort of I'm like. What is it about how he's got, you know, because I, I haven't done landscape really, which is something that I'm maybe going to try and do. I'm not sure. How, again, this is all okay. of this. I'm like, it's ill in here. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would yeah. you would you make, so you make up the faces. Yeah. Would you make up the landscape? I think I. Or would I, you sit outside and. Oh, I don't know. I, I like to be indoors. <laughs> I, yeah. I might take, take a photo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take photos. So, yeah. I might like, I like the idea of being able to go out a lot and being like, Oh yeah, I found that feeling. I'd like to try and capture this and put it yeah. in. Yeah. But you know, I'm, I don't know when I'm going to get the time to do that. <laughs> you know, Not yet. And yeah. the ceramic yeah. frames. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm just a bit like, well, that's a nice idea. I'll put that on the back burner. And also, like with winter coming now, I'm like, yeah, it's not really the time to. I don't know when I would do it, but um, yeah, it's. Uh, I like to be in my studio on my own. That's the other reason why I use photos, and I'm I make up the faces. I don't, you know, people, are, I do, I have done and I do do portraiture commissions, but I'm not somebody that paints from life because mm. I'm like, this mm. is kind of my sacred space. Yeah. 
this is where I come to be on my own. Mm-hmm. I put on, you know, a podcast or radio, whatever. And I just, yeah. It's not, it's not therapy it's, when you've got someone no. there, I suppose. <laughs> no, it, yeah. and I don't, it doesn't feel and like I, yeah. Yeah. So I like it to be solitary time. And um, yeah, that's the other thing coming back. I'm like, I've had my first full room that is my studio since... Oh, God, since I left college, I've not had a, a room to us. I've just always worked in a corner in, like, the living room or whatever. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that's been nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Nice. Are you happy to roll into a couple of quick-fire yeah. questions? If Let's I'm do fine? it. Yeah? Um, Favourite film, Saren? Favourite film? Holy smokes. When it's always that, a tough one, isn't when it? When was the last time I saw a film? <laughs> like, like six years well, ago? Well, pre-kids. Yeah, I know, right? And sometimes John will be like, we'll be like, God, I'd love to watch that film. Oh, it's really long, though. People tell us it keeps getting... It is, does get easier, apparently, but I'm still... Yeah. <laughs> yeah I look um, at a runtime of a movie, and I'm like, that's a double-nighter. Yeah. yeah. Two hours, 20. Yeah. Probably going to roll into two nights, that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, three. Yeah. Maybe yeah. three. Yeah, three. No, three is <laughs> yeah, What was yeah. that? Let me think what's one I've enjoyed. Oh, Christ, this is, this is hard. Okay, we can come back to that one. Yeah, let's Favourite chocolate yeah. bar is easier. Um, I do like a Terry's. Uh, well into Terry's chocolate. Oh, like, oh. like a te- like, like, like a chocolate chocolate orange. Oh, the chocolate orange you mean? Yeah. Oh right. Oh, okay. Terry's cho- yeah, yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, l- that, I love the chocolate orange. Tony's. Tony's. Oh yeah, yeah. Tony's. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, Tony's oh, yeah no. Oh, oh, Terry's. oh, not the yeah. Terry's. Yeah, Terry's chocolate. Good choice. I love. I love a chocolate. Yeah, that one. I'm like for like you know, a sort of they like to charge quite a lot of them sometimes, but for like a cheap sort of chocolate. It's yeah. actually like bung some orange in it and you're like, yeah, I love it. It's like Cadbury's not so much. You used much, to be able to get it for a pound. Now not so, so, pound 50 is a I good deal. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. That is strong, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I Inflation. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I've got bougie tastes as well, but I think <clears throat> I think Terry's is the one at the moment. Yeah. Okay, nice. Okay. For band or music? Oh, man. I have definitely fallen into the trap of like turning 27 and my ability to listen to new music completely dropped off <laughs> um it's very hard it's very hard for me too yeah because um, there's a lot of shit <sighs> yeah and yeah. i just i think when you're getting into music as a teenager your emotions are so raw yeah and it hits in such a it goes straight in doesn't it and it sticks in a way and i'm like i don't even have the time to sit down and daydream anymore i don't know how i'm gonna get you yeah. know so at that um but a favorite band i mean one i always come back to and it was like first love and it's one that you know, I come back to time and time again is the Beatles. It was mm. one that like my parents would give to, you sure. know, we had, we'd listen to it in the car. I think they were like, yeah. let's get the kids into something bearable for this long car journey. <laughs> so I think the Beatles is like a consistent one, which is a really boring answer. Um, Not but, at all. But you bang it on and the way you can sing along to it, I bloody mm. love it. I yeah. bet it brings back some good memories as well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does, yeah. 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 Nostalgia Yellow Submarine. with the old music. Yeah. yeah, we used to watch Yellow Submarine all the time. Have you ever watched that? Yeah. I think I have, you know. Oh, man. Maybe no. when I was a kid, but I don't no. really... Oh, is, that really? The, is that the artwork with the blue meanie and... Yeah, and they yes. got... they got a few drugs going on there, isn't there? Oh, trippy as hell. <laughs> yeah. But as a kid, you're like, I understand this. You don't know that <laughs> yeah. it's that. No. Yeah. But you're no. like, no, this all makes complete sense. <laughs> yeah, I think they got it. It was animated by a number of top British artists at the yeah. time. So okay. it's, it's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Thank you yeah. so much for your for your time and no, thank, sharing stuff. With yeah, you. Thanks so much. Yeah. Oh, thanks it's been a pleasure. On. Thank you so much for listening to my witterings. It's been yeah, it's been great. Great. <laughs> thank cool. you very thanks much. Brilliant. Thank you.